Hey folks, how you doing? So today I'm looking at a tent from a company called Free Soldier. This is a budget military tent. I've never had a military tent before, um, but I suppose the difference between military tents and ultralight tents is military tents go for more uh, durability than the ultralight, which is portability. I suppose military tents probably use heavier and more durable um, materials and you can definitely feel that in the weight of this. This is weighing in at 2.25 kilograms. It is not a light tent and this is a one person. Never had a military tent before. Let's open her up. Let's see what it's like. So it comes with your normal tag. I love the logo actually. It's really cool. It's all Chinese so it seems to be a Chinese brand. Okay so this is the bag itself. Um, it comes in two colours. This is the camo colour, which I really like, especially for my first military tent. It's a tent that I more than likely would be using in the woods. It comes in another colour called uh, mud, but this is the camo colour. It's not the side access bag like the Van Gogh's, my favourites. So let's take everything out and see what we get. It's fairly tight, so I'd say you'd be looking at struggling getting it back in. That's what she said. You can feel the material. The material seems very, very, uh, we'll say durable is what they're after. Okay, let's have a look. So here's the aluminium poles. We'll go through them in a minute. Let's see what kind of pegs we get. How many? You get one, two, three, four, five. You get six aluminium pegs, fairly basic. Okay, let's put it together and see what it's like. Let's start with the aluminium poles. The fairly basic spring-loaded poles is what they have in all of them. Oh, I see they have the cross beam. Now, I had this cross beam on the Van Gogh tent, the last one I reviewed and used, and there was a lot of issues with the cross beam, what I saw on a tent in wind, because, yeah, we'll see, we'll see in time. We'll just put the tent up first and we'll go through some of the features, but that's your basic aluminium poles. This material feels so strong. Hence what I was saying about uh, durability versus portability. Like it is over two kilogram tent <laughs> for a one person. But anyway, let's go. Once again, it just has the, the holes to go into. Pretty good. has the latch points that go up. It has just your basic, your pole goes into each corner, here and here, and then there's one, two, three and four latch points, then just goes into each corner, and then you have your cross beams which usually go on top of the pole, for the simple reason is that you need to get the height. So, yeah. So there's a lot of mesh in it, but what I am seeing is the material comes up a lot because I know you have a bathtub design, but that material comes up really far. So hot air rises, so I presume when you're in this, you'll get, I suppose, a lot of airflow through it. Okay, that's the beauty of freestanding tents. You can just move them around to suit. Okay, so you have a zip that goes over. So let's have a gander. So they're your fairly, fairly basic zips. They don't look like they're water sealed or anything like that, but it is a two-way zip, which is great. This can fold back. It is a very small entrance. I know I'm not the biggest man in the world, but <laughs> it is a very small entrance. I suppose the bathtub comes up a good bit at the bottom. It's about a foot off the ground. I'll do all measurements in a while, but, but the quality of the material it's surprisingly good for the price of it. Like you, you get this for hundred euro, like so. Six pegs. So let's see where these go. Just throw one in each corner. Fairly basic. On their website, it doesn't say much about the material and what it is. You can feel that it is very good. But after doing some research, they said that it is. Uh, 150D Oxford fabric, 2000 plus water, waterproof rating. Don't know what that means, but that's what it is. 
it seems fairly waterproof <laughs> just by the feel of it. Um, the stitching, it's all right. There's a few, there's a few rogue uh, stitching out in places, but in general, the actual material is fairly good. The corner pieces here. Uh, you have a storm flap on the door. Wait, one and two areas for Velcro. The actual zip themselves is fairly, it's your fairly basic one. Um, you have a tie-out point. So I presume that tie-out point could go on to the same actual peg that goes on to the, the end here. Um, on the ends of it, now that doesn't make any sense because you have a vent on the inner but sure this goes all the way down to the bottom so there's no wind going to be getting in there hmm, that's just odd what I have noticed is the actual spine of the tent there's no velcro holding it in place even though if you saw from my last review and my last camp with the Van Gogh velcro doesn't make a difference you have one tie back for the door it only opens on one side so that's fairly uh, that's fairly basic they say there's heated uh, seals on the inside so we'll look at them in a minute and on this side it's the same so that makes absolutely no sense where you have on the inner of the tent you have two vented areas but the outer has none okay so the vented area here it has a can that bend yeah it can bend so that's just like a foam insert um, on two bits of velcro okay which doesn't really stay in place so you will need to actually put a tie out point here just to keep that open and help secure the tent in place but I will say they only give you six pegs there's six places for them and they give you no guidelines so I'm wondering am I missing something here because I only see one tie out point which is here that's one big flaw I can see and I don't know whether it's like this on all military tents but there's no places to put guidelines there's one place on the vent on the outside and it's fine if they don't provide you with the guidelines but there's nowhere to even place them that's strange like this is my first military tent so maybe is that something on all of them I need to do some research into it but like the only place you'd use this is in a forest or somewhere where there's no wind <laughs> it's a heavy tent anyway but adding like say four places that you can actually tie on your own guidelines and some extra pegs it's going to make it the full thing heavier, but at least give the option, you know. So the vestibule, it's nothing to, it's nothing to sing about. It's an okay size. So you have, just cut them off. You have a good size pocket here. You have a good size pocket there. And you have a vent here. But what I was on about is the outer part of the tent. Um, is all the way to the floor so uh, you have a hook point up here and it's identical on the other side so hook point then you have big pocket big pocket and an air vent so it's fairly basic there's a lot of mesh there here is the vent area to the outside yeah size wise it's fairly okay we'll get measuring now so the entrance size is less than three foot the vestibule the vestibule is two foot, I suppose it's fairly average. Let me take some measurements with, I might actually take this off because you'll have a better idea of what size of person this would be good for. So as you can see here, the heated seam seals. It seems to be very good, being totally honest. We'll know more when we uh, get it out into the wet. So it's a bathtub design, so as you can see, it comes up 200 millimeters. Okay, so the height. Being that it has like a, a longer roof, there isn't like a, a pinpoint in the middle that is a, the exact height you need. You actually have a good lot of headspace all at the same level. Of 600 millimeters in the middle, you've that same level headspace going all the way along. So it's not just one little, one little piece, which is pretty good. So the height is 950 mil, which is fairly good being totally honest. The length of this tent is seven foot, two and a half foot in width are uh, 70 centimeters. So the mesh here is a B3 mesh, they call it. I presume that's the size of the holes uh, for actual what will get through it and what midges will get through it. 
the actual ground sheet itself is a 210 uh, Oxford fabric. It's a PU coated 3000 millimeters. There's nothing getting through that, but it's my first time coming across the Oxford fabric. Like it's really, really strong. You can really, you can really feel the quality of it. And I suppose that all comes down to the actual weight of the full unit itself. Okay, so there you have it. I don't, want to, I don't want to do a pros and cons because this is not even a review, it's a first impressions. Um, there, there are a few loose threads in it, but I normally wouldn't mention the pros and cons, but one big red flag for me is the fact that there's nowhere, no guidelines and there's nowhere to place guidelines. So where is this tent fur? Just the woods? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm a bit puzzled by it because... I don't know if I'd trust bringing this up to the mountains. Unless I was guaranteed a night that it wasn't windy. Yeah, odd one. What I might do is the next storm or something, I might put it up out in the back garden, check um, how waterproof it is and check if the wind does any, anything to it. You'll need some decent long pegs if, if your peg points into the ground are the only place that's keeping this in place. Um, so yeah, that's a big, big red flag for me. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. One, if you don't provide the guidelines, that's fine, but at least have somewhere to hook them on. It doesn't take much. But anyway, yeah, I really do like the color. And for the price of it, it is surprisingly very good quality. The materials they're using is very good quality. Few loose treads, but you'll get loose treads on, on a lot of tents. We'll get it out and we'll see how it performs. But anyway, thanks for watching and uh, let me know in your comments what you think of it. And am I missing something with the guidelines? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, stay safe out there. <laughs> and we'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.